Hi everyone, I'm Sneha Neki and I have done my B.Tech in Computer Science from a state government college in Uttarakhand named J.B. Pandey Rand College. And I have secured AR80 in GHCSC 2021. And I'm currently a second year MTech CSS student in Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. So as our placement season is over, I'm currently placed in NVIDIA as a system software engineer. I've also got an uh, opportunity to sit through the interview process of a lot of different companies, both for SD and data science role. So my motivation of making this video is to talk about a few things that I think uh, one can do if someone is, uh, has just given the gate exam and expecting to get admission into a good institute for their MTech and or someone who is in their BTech and preparing for placements. So uh, these are the few things that I have learned from my experience and of course my friend's experience that I believe are important when someone is preparing for placements. Uh, so uh, before starting a video, I, I would want to say something uh, that it's okay if you haven't found out about your interests yet or uh, maybe the job profile you want to get into, uh, for example, SD or data science or anything. Or if you have even not decided about your dream company, uh, it's okay, I haven't yet. Uh, because I feel the thing that is most important to me is what I don't like. Mm, I would never do something that I don't like. And that is in another case if you like something so very much that everything else you just dislike. Uh, that's another case, but you got my point, right? So uh, now that we are short, that we want to prepare for placements. Uh, I would start with making few points um, and just get into the video. The first thing that I believe is most important when you are preparing for something for placement or your interview is confidence. Not just in the interview, but in general also. Confidence is something that people will admire on you. So uh, I believe there are two sets of people. First, who to whom confidence just comes naturally. You know, they'll do anything, they'll do it with such a confidence whether they have any expertise on it or not. Then there is another set of people who feel confident only to a certain specific area of their expertise. I consider myself in the second category because I'm someone uh, I'm someone who will feel more confident as, I, as my preparation goes through. The more I'm prepared, the more confident I'll feel. But I think there are few people who, uh, you know, underestimate themselves. They'll, they'll compare their preparation with others and, you know, feel doubtful about themselves. I think rather than feeling doubtful about things that you have not prepared, you should feel confident about things that you have already prepared and enter the room with that confidence. And magic will happen. Because I'll tell you a story. Recently, I went to uh, an, the ISRO interview and... The guy who just went before me, when he came outside, he said that uh, interviewers are really chill. Uh, they are smiling and you know very friendly. And he said um, there are a few questions that he couldn't answer, but they were all really friendly and about it. So then when I entered the room, um, throughout my interview process, I really did not feel that they were very friendly. You know? I thought that they were smiling, but I thought they were smiling at me and judging my answers. And you know, things like that. And it was making me more nervous. So when I came outside, I was thinking that it was all about the perspective. That guy who went before me was really chill about the whole interview. And you know, he seems confident. He seemed confident. So, you know, it's just an example that how your confidence makes your perspective change. Right? So uh, then when I was in my preparation phase for the placement, I had a friend to whom I always used to crave about uh, my placement preparation that I've not prepared enough, others are preparing more and so and so. And he used, or he used to tell me that just be confident about it, don't worry, you'll do better. Whereas he was the one who was preparing, you know, next to nothing. But he's someone that I know of that there's no interview he sat on and didn't clear. And, you know, because... I know him personally and he's very confident about himself, but it's not that we are very different intellects. I learned this thing about confidence that, you know, confidence can make or break your interview, no matter how much prepared you are before going to the interview. 
So the next important thing to prepare for a placement or interview is coding. I know, I know everybody knows about it that how important coding is to crack a good placement. But my motivation is to emphasize on the part where everybody thinks it's so very important to be good at it that people start threatening out. Because um, in my BTEC, I had my batchmates who used to participate in coding contest. And only I knew that oh, coding is something that I should also be doing. But then these, you know, batchmates, wherever they'll go, they'll talk about these problems, discuss their solution and all those things. And, you know, um, with that comes the pressure and nobody really enjoys the pressure, right? I just want to emphasize on the part that you don't really have to be master at coding to get a good placement. I don't want this video to be misleading, but until unless I actually said in the placements, I always was scared of coding. I used to think that there are a lot of people who are better than me at it. What are the chances of me getting a good placement? But uh, luckily I had friends who used to reassure me of my caliber that I'm, you know, I can do good enough. So my confidence was intact. So uh, now that I have experienced the whole placement interview process, I have tips that I want to share it can be helpful to you if you are preparing for coding jobs. So uh, the first thing when you start preparing for any coding interview is uh, prepare a programming language. Now, uh, if you are in your BTEC, it's very well assumed that you already know at least one or two programming language. If not, and you would like me to have uh, to give you a recommendation, I would suggest CPP. I have CPP in 11th and 12th, so maybe I'm biased toward it because it's my first programming language, but hear me out. Other than uh, the fact that it's object-oriented, it's high on speed, it's act this uh, CPP actually have standard template library, you know, inbuilt, which has inbuilt function that you can really use to solve a hundred of frequently asked interview questions. And once you will start solving uh, these uh, coding problems, then only you will know the importance of STL in CPP. Other than there are actually a lot of companies who prefer students who are comfortable with CPP uh, because it's a hardware level uh, programming language and you can really code operating system codes, gaming codes, even GUI based application with CPP. For example, I'm Tangi based in NVIDIA. And in the interview, they specifically want us to write in CPP and specifically wanted us to implement the OOPS concept. You know, they wanted us to write all classes, function, and those kind of stuff. They asked me to implement uh, FCFS, first come, first serve scheduling, uh, which uh, in operating system using the C++ programming. So uh, CPP is something that's high on demand and it would be safe for you if you are starting with some language and start with CPP. Other than that, if you already know any other language, it's all okay because in all the coding interviews, there are several choices of programming language when you, uh, you know, give the exam. So the next important thing when you're preparing for coding interview is that don't be afraid of coding. Treat it like any other subject which you study and then solve questions out of it. Once you're fluent with any programming language, there are not many things to remember when you solve any coding problem because it's all logic based and it comes with practice and practicing coding is like practicing any other habit you know the more you do it the more comfortable you become with it and the more effortless it becomes at the end and learning anything is much more easier and much more efficient when you know the end goal the end product you are going to get after learning that skill so interest is not the only thing that is important to learn something the end product that you want from it is now i'm not much of a believer of the saying because um, i don't think it's very much practical in real life because the end product the file is something that gives me motivation to even start working on something now that you know a programming language and you are not afraid of coding anymore I would like to share a few steps that you can follow to start your coding journey. So when I was in BTEC, I used to think that to get a good placement, I have to be doing competitive coding and be good at it, participate in a lot of contests and so on and so on. 
it's not really to all you need is a specific set of topics uh, which are covered in data structures and algorithm and you are good to go now data structure and algorithm is something that is very important when it's come to placement okay then code but most of the company looks for the basic of data structure and algorithm in any candidate Sometimes they will just throw a random question at you, and while you are wondering about your coding tactics, they just want to see what kind of data structure you are going to use for the particular problem. Because using a correct data structure can even uh, help you with the time complexity. Now, uh, questions from algorithm are mostly straightforward. They'll uh, they maybe ask you to write a pseudo code of an algorithm. Ask you about time complexity and maybe ask if there is any other algorithm which you know run better than the same algorithm for this problem. Here's how you can divide data structure and algorithm. The data structure part covers array, stack, queue, hash maps, linked list, DST, and BTs. And that's really all. Now the algorithm part covers sorting, searching, backtracking, greedy, recursion, graph-based problem dynamic programming based problem and bit manipulation. Now these algorithm does not contain a disjoint subset of problem um, because if you will see uh, graph related problems, uh, you can solve graph related problems using greedy algorithms, for example, Digixtra. Then there are BFS and DFS problem which uses a backtracking. Then the DP problems can also be solved using recursion. So it's not like that uh, these contain a disjoint set of problem, but these are the wide uh, range of techniques that you will use to solve any kind of problem. So when you pick a topic, you start recognizing a pattern while solving questions from that topic. And with time and with practice, the problem of solving a question will narrow down to problem of recognizing the pattern and then solving it with the respective technique. Now, if you look at it like a slavers, you'll be able to complete it and that too with a good grade. Now, if you ask me, I'll suggest uh, start with a topic, go to YouTube, search for that topic and you'll find a number of good playlists of problems from that particular topic. Okay, so the first one that is coming, it is absolutely my favorite. Uh, this is from a YouTuber, Aditya Varma. I have solved a lot of DP questions from his playlist only then uh, you can see he has multiple such playlists uh, i've also used his binary search playlist and his recursion playlist the way he uh, teaches any topic is what i really understand you can find what youtuber shows you the best and follow with those playlists only because you know starting makes easier to just uh, start some someone explaining it and actually understanding it. Obviously, it will have to and you will actually have to practice those questions. Now for practicing question, I would personally recommend Leap Code because I like their interface a lot. I like coming back here because they have a lot of features. For example, you get points for daily coming back to solve question here. You get points for making streaks. So little things, you know. And then uh, you can also save your favorite questions if you find some questions that you want to go back to and you feel it's important. You can save it. For example, here I have saved my favorite questions. And then also we were enrolled from the college in a coding boot camp from Applied Gate. So you can solve their question on lead code and save your favorite ones as well. And I have saved binary search based question, the binary tree based question, what I have done. And also uh, when you will be complete with all the TSA topics, slowly you will have to, you know, go to some harder level questions. Yeah, the basic that you have to cover is TSA. Once you are uh, well versed with DSA, you can easily jump on to a little harder level questions now lead code also helps you keep track of in what level you are currently on for example it says that i have done a lot of questions for dying programming divide and concur these questions so uh i am on advanced level in these topics but then intermediate in these topics and things like that 
then you can see I haven't really solved a lot of questions. So my profile is not an ideal profile. But uh, yeah, I have sometimes solved a few questions on Geeks for Geeks uh, and so on. But still, I haven't really solved like thousands of questions in one go. Also, this is my new lead code profile that I started after my MTech. Now, it's not like that I, I've sat one day and started doing all of these things from one side. I gradually did it over the year in my tech and never knew that it was sufficient. Because with all this facade in the market about, you know, placement, coding, and courses coming out. So it's obvious for anybody to feel insufficient of their preparation. Now, if you'll confuse the DSA with competitive programming, then... Uh, it will be difficult for you because competitive programming contains a large number of set of different techniques, algorithms, and problems that really need you to be of the ordinary to be really, really good at it. Then there are other subjects for ST interviews as well, um, but these are very company specific. For example, when I was preparing for NVIDIA and Cisco, so I had to prepare operating system. Um, computer network, computer organization, and architecture, you know, compiler design. So uh, for these company-specific subjects, students usually prepare one, two days before the interview. You know, you can just go to Google, uh, search for, uh, you know, interview experiences for the particular company and prepare accordingly. So this is what we have done. And since we have also prepared for gates, operating system, computer organization, architecture, computer network, these are the subjects that we had there. We didn't really remember all the concepts, but it was uh, easier for us to just go through our notes and, you know, revise just a day before the exam, uh, the interview. So, yeah. Now for the data science-based role. Most of the data science-based companies also require a coding based test before the interview. So if you are preparing for data science role, it's not like your DSA preparation will go to waste. It's not like that. But then again, there are many companies uh, uh, for data science who do not care about your DSA at all. They solely will take your interview on the basis of your machine learning based subjects knowledge. And uh, there were companies where non-CS students performed better than CS students. Uh, for these data science roles solely based on their machine learning expertise. Now I have few recommendations to make to prepare for data science and machine learning roles. Uh, but before that, I would like to share uh, my story with you. When I was on BTEC, I bought this uh, machine learning course from Coursera. At the time, I had no end goal and product in my mind what I'm going to get after completing this course. So I did the course. I even did the, all the assignments by myself. I even made the notes. Now, when I went to my AMTEC, I had machine learning based course. Okay. So uh, when I was learning, uh, when I was studying the subject, I didn't realize that these terms I have already heard. Until unless I looked into my notes copy from the BTEC and realized that I've already studied these topics and I had no clue. So uh, my motivation of telling the story is that don't buy a course just for the sake of buying it or maybe just filling it in the resume or maybe because it's trendy or everybody is doing it. Just don't do it that way. Because now when I was in MTech, I was learning machine learning subject. I had a motivation of getting good grade, uh, building projects out of it, building my resume. So the learning stays with me, uh, stayed with me for longer. So yeah, that's the whole motivation of sharing this story. Now I'll just uh, give my recommendations. If you are someone who wants to prepare for placement specifically and you have you know a restricted amount of time to prepare for data science roles then i would really suggest this applied machine learning online course from applied roots i have personally followed that course and here the teaching is good understanding of the topic with relevance to the interview is good it covers machine learning basic to advanced deep learning and also have good number of projects involved in the course so I would highly recommend this. I have personally made notes while studying from these courses and I think they were really helpful while revising for the interview.
so now my recommendations are mainly for students who are going through their masters or learning these subjects extensively will ease up your semester for others who just want to crack data science interview basic knowledge of these will suffice you can even catch up with these topics as they become relevant while going through machine learning topics okay my first recommendation is this linear algebra course by gilbert strand this is a whole mit lecture playlist for this now how is linear algebra relevant in machine learning so there are a few techniques uh, that we use in machine learning that comes from linear algebra concept uh, now for building project you don't really have to look deeper into how a technique works but an interviewer might be interested in your understanding of how things work one of the simplest prediction technique called linear regression in machine learning uses the concept of linear algebra so uh, it would be really helpful for you if you can once go through this whole playlist and make important notes out of it now my second uh, important recommendation will be this statistics 110 probability course it is offered by harvard university that covers the fundamental of probability theory uh, this course covers topics such as combinatorics random variable distribution expectation variance covariance conditional probability bayes rule law of large numbers central limit theorem and etc so uh, probability theory is mostly used to model the distribution of data in machine learning and you know we can use probability distribution such as gaussian poisson or bernoulli to model different types of data so this course is something that i'll highly recommend if you really want to deep dive into you know machine learning subjects uh, then another recommendation for learning all the machine learning algorithm including the mathematical expression involved in it you know if you want a deep understanding of how linear regression um, algorithm is derived you know the equation that we use for linear regression how the equation is derived these kind of things you can learn from this uh, pattern recognition course now if you are done with the machine learning concept and you really want to deep dive into you no know, deep learning concept then this uh, deep learning course from mitesh khapra is one for you i have personally followed this course um, throughout my deep learning course in iic so um, yeah i think the teaching of the concept is great here uh, the examples are great um you must follow this course if you want to learn deep learning extensively so i think i have covered all the important aspect of the whole placement process in brief and some in detail so if you think that i have missed something please comment down below or uh, if you like it please like it share it with your friends yeah thank you bye bye